So my name is Rodrigo Mendez Rojano. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the BME department of Cornell University. I'm going to show you the work that we have been doing in multi-scale thrombosis modeling under high shear rate conditions, specifically in the case of the platelet function is a PFA 100. So I have nothing to disclose. Thrombosis, which is the formation of a blood clot, it's still a relevant issue for several biomedical devices that are in contact with blood. In recent years, mathematical modeling has been used to increase the performance of these devices and understand better the clotting process. These models must take into consideration the different biochemical players that take part or that interact in the clotting process and also how they interact with the hemodynamic transport of the biochemical species. So, however, not all the existing models consider the biochemical or all the biochemical players that are involved in the thrombosis process. This is uh, particularly the case of the Bonfriedman factor, which is a glycoprotein that unfolds under high shear rate environments and promotes uh, or increases the platelet receptors and therefore the formation of the thrombus. So the hypothesis of the current work is that BWF must be considered in high shear rate conditions that are particularly relevant to biomedical devices such as ventricular assist devices. To study this we simulated PFA 100 uh, which is a coagulation assay that assesses the primary hemostasis under high shear rates. It uh, consists of sucking blood through a cylindrical cartridge that has um, a central membrane with a orifice, as it is shown in the lower uh, right image. And then when blood is flowing through the orifice, it will occlude. And when this occlusion happens, a uh, closure time is obtained that then it, it is used to diagnose. So to simulate this uh, coagulation essay, we use an existing multi-scale thrombosis model that is based on plated activity and additional considerations are done to account for the BWF activity and increase plated deposition under these high shear rate environments. So an axisymmetric simulation was uh, performed. Here we observe the middle plane velocity and shear rate fields. We can observe that in the orifice we have both the highest velocity and shear rates and in this region BWF will be able to unfold and therefore um, clot growth will be promoted. In terms of biochemical boundary conditions, so uh, an ADP flux was uh, applied at the membrane boundary. The membrane boundary is indicated with red uh, dashed lines, and in this boundary, platelets are able to deposit. So, what we can see from the animation is that in the left case, which is the one that is considered or in which we consider from virulent factor activity, a clot grows in order to occlude the central orifice. However, in the case when BWF activity is turned off, only a frontal uh, clot is observed in each part of the, or the, of the membrane um, and no occlusion is observed. It is important to say that the only parameter that we calibrated was ADP flux. In order to do so, all the rest of the parameters were obtained from uh, literature and uh, the initial conditions that we used was the patient-specific uh, VAT clinical data. And then since we know the closure time for those patients, we can adapt the ADP flux to match the closure time. So once that parameter is fixed, we perform a parametric study variating the plated count, the background plated activity, and the BWF concentration. And would we observe that most of the closure times that we obtained with the model were in the range of the clinical variations. Important to notice that 
the background plate activation had a significant impact on decreasing the closure time. So it might be important to pay close attention to this parameter when characterizing experimentally. So just to conclude, PWF must be considered under high shear rate uh, conditions that are relevant for several biomedical devices. Thank you.